Hello everybody. Today I am going to start a, a new topic as part of this uh, lecture series on NDT and this will be on acoustic emission testing. which is also uh, known as A testing in short. Okay. So, like what you always do, uh, first we will learn about uh, the basic principle of this technique and then we will see how it is done. Uh, in the last uh, topic, if you remember it was on uh, ultrasonic testing. And uh, what we saw in that case is that uh, you have a piezoelectric uh, ultrasonic uh, transducer through which uh, you are sending uh, ultrasonic waves uh, into a sample and whenever these uh, sound waves uh, reflect back uh, from a surface or from discontinuities, we collect this echo and then we display them. Okay? And that is how uh, we get to know about the presence of defects in a given sample. Okay. So, utilizing sound waves and their reflection, uh, we uh, do the NDT in that case. In this particular technique also, acoustic emission testing, as uh, the name suggests, particularly the term acoustic, it also indicates that it has to do something with uh, sound waves. Okay. But in this case, uh, it is bit different from uh, what we do in ultrasonic testing in the sense in ultrasonic testing you have a two way traffic, uh, you first send the sound waves into the sample and then you uh, collect the echoes back. Okay? So, when you send uh, sound waves uh, inside the sample as we would have uh, discussed, uh, the sound waves uh, propagate by creating oscillatory movement uh, in the atoms or in the molecules. Okay? So, it uh, uh, propagates uh, by some kind of elastic waves through the sample. Okay? Now, uh, for any reason, uh, if you have this kind of uh, waves uh, generated inside the sample itself, okay? then uh, when they come out uh, from the part, and if you could receive them by a sensor, then also uh, that could be used uh, to do non-destructive testing. Okay. But in order to create these elastic waves inside the sample without exciting it, uh, there has to be some movement which can uh, uh, provide this uh, uh, oscillatory movement to the atoms. Okay. And for that to happen, uh, the sample has to be loaded, then only uh, you could have some dynamic events inside the sample, which will in turn create some kind of elastic stress waves, which will propagate through the sample and come out. Okay? So, if you have a uh, dynamic or moving defect uh, when the sample is loaded, then in this case also uh, some kind of sound wave or some elastic wave can be generated inside the sample and they will come out of the sample. Okay? So, if you have a sensor, you could receive this uh, elastic waves which are known as acoustic emission waves. Okay? So, the source of acoustic emission wave is uh, the redistribution of a stress field inside the sample due to a movement of some kind of defect. For example, it could be a crack which can initiate and then propagate. So, due to that uh, crack propagation, there will be some uh, movement uh, on an atomic scale and due to that, uh, this elastic waves will be generated and if you have a sensor to receive them, you would be able to know that you know there is a source of acoustic emission inside the sample and hence, uh, there could be some defect which is active. Okay? But in order to generate uh, those elastic waves, okay, the first requirement is that uh, the component or uh, the part which is being uh, 
examined must be loaded because uh, in order to uh, create that uh, stress wave you uh, need to uh, apply some load then only there will be uh, you know some change like uh, crack initiation or propagation which can generate these elastic waves okay so that's the first requirement that uh, the part or the system which is being uh, examined must be loaded okay so let's say you have a component and uh, you load it in a particular fashion then in some part of the sample this uh, stress waves will be generated so that will be the source of the emissions and then uh, these waves will uh, propagate from this source okay So, this is a source of uh, acoustic emission or uh, stress waves generated due to this applied load for whatever reasons uh, which we are going to talk about little later. Uh, now, if you have sensor over here uh, which can uh, sense these uh, waves coming out from the sample, then uh, you would be able to uh, collect them. So, first thing that you need to do in order to collect and then utilize them is to amplify them because generally the intensity of this kind of emission will be very low. So, you use a pre amplifier and then send this signal to the detection and the measurement system. which will generate an electrical signal out of this uh, elastic waves and give you something to see on the display okay and then that can be interpreted and then you would be able to know uh, if there are any uh, defects which are active inside the component okay right so this is how this technique uh, works so the first uh, requirement is that it has to be loaded if there is no load then there is no emission so this is the first characteristic uh, feature of acoustic emission if the defects or the damage that you have uh, inside a component if it is not active okay then you are not going to get any emission out of it okay so that is the first uh, and the foremost uh, difference between acoustic uh, emission testing and any other entity method in which case we have seen that we detect the existing defects okay whatever it may be which may or may not be active for example, if you have a crack, that uh, crack may not have to be propagating in order to be detected by other entity methods. Okay. But in this case, if you want to detect that crack, it has to be active and it has to propagate. Okay. So, that is the uh, uh, prime difference uh, between acoustic emission testing and any other entity technique and for the uh, defect and the uh, cracks to be active the part has to be loaded okay so that's the that is how this uh, particular characteristic uh, come into picture that if there is no load there is no emission okay so when you do uh, acoustic emission testing then the part has to be loaded by controlled loading so, this uh, K 
can be before uh, service or during the service of that particular component. And if it is a load bearing uh, structure, then uh, you know it is anyway loaded. Okay. So, all you have to do, you have to place the sensors at appropriate locations and then try and see if you uh, get any acoustic emission signal coming out uh, from different regions. Okay. So, this kind of uh, system will be loaded anyway. So, then in these cases, there is no need to load it externally. Okay. And the other uh, important aspect uh, of this particular technique is, uh, you would be able to uh, inspect a big structure in a single inspection. So, you do not really have to do uh, local examinations in this case like you do for many other uh, NET techniques. So, even if you have a very big uh, structure or very big area to be inspected, that can be done uh, in a single examination itself by placing a number of uh, sensors at different locations where you think there could be a potential source of uh, damage uh, which could lead to uh, acoustic emission events. Okay. So, this is uh, another uh, characteristic uh, feature of this particular technique that you do not need to do uh, inspection in small local areas, rather you can inspect the whole structure in one go itself and that is how uh, this offers uh, some advantage in terms of uh, time and cost. So, if you see the sources of uh, acoustic emission, as I said, uh, you need a stress field which will uh, generate these uh, stress waves. which will propagate uh, through the sample and will be received by the sensor. Okay. So, when you uh, load a, a material or a system, then various things can happen uh, depending on what kind of material or what kind of uh, system it is, which can uh, act as uh, sources of acoustic emissions okay, by providing you uh, some active defect okay, inside the component. For example, if you have uh, a metal, so in metallic systems uh, when it is loaded, uh, different uh, phenomena can take place. For example, uh, you could have micro and macro cracks initiating and propagating. So, initiation and propagation of uh, cracks when a metallic system is loaded uh, can generate lot of acoustic emissions, lot of these uh, stress waves and this will serve as a source. Okay. Then uh, you could have some micro dynamical events like twinning. When you uh, talk about metals, uh, metals uh, deform uh, mainly by two uh, mechanisms. One is known as slip and the other one is known as twinning. Okay. 
whenever a metal is loaded, I could either have a slip happening or a twinning happening depending on the conditions and that is how they plastically deform. And the process of uh, slip happens uh, due to a lattice defect which is known as dislocation. So, when you load a metallic system, this dislocations will move and due to that movement it uh, creates what is called a slip which is uh, movement of atomic planes over one another as if they are slipping over each other when the dislocations move. Okay. So, movement of uh, these lattice defects known as dislocations can also generate acoustic emission inside metals. Then if there are uh, brittle inclusions or some kind of uh, impurity which is uh, leading to formation of this kind of uh, you know brittle uh, foreign elements or foreign inclusions uh, inside a metal. Then uh, fracture of this uh, kind of brittle inclusions when you apply the load can also generate acoustic emission. Then uh, other events like uh, a chemical action such as corrosion which is common in metals can also lead to uh, these elastic stress waves or acoustic emissions. Okay. Then uh, many of the metallic uh, system uh, goes through uh, what is known as phase transformation wherein it changes from one phase to another phase at a particular temperature for a given system. Okay. So, uh, the parent phase and uh, the phase which is forming uh, they are different and their volume also could be different. So, due to this change in the volume uh, it can lead to uh, stresses inside the material and due to that stress again uh, this kind of acoustic emission can be generated. Okay. So, phase transformation can also be a source of acoustic emissions in metals. So, this happens as I told due to a change in the volume. which uh, leads to small strain effects. Okay. And then this in turn will generate the uh, elastic waves or the acoustic emissions. Then if you uh, take a material like a composite, then in that case, uh, acoustic emissions can generate due to fracture of the reinforcing fibers at uh, medium strain level.
delamination this is again a type of damage in composite materials which can happen at high strain levels. Then another common uh, phenomena in uh, composite material when it is loaded is uh, fiber pull out. These fibers will simply pull out uh, from the matrix uh, leaving behind uh, some uh, voids. So, that kind of event can also generate these uh, stress waves and will lead to uh, acoustic emission. Then the matrix also can crack. So, matrix uh, cracking and fiber debonding from the matrix. Uh, this can happen at uh, low strain level. In the other previous two cases, it was at medium strain at high strain and at lower strain you could have this kind of uh, phenomena happening inside a composite material. The matrix can crack or the fiber can separate or the fiber can debond at uh, low strain levels. Okay. So, these are the different sources in case of composite materials. Then if you have a system like a concrete, there also you have those uh, reinforcing bars which uh, uh, reinforce uh, the concrete. Okay. So, those uh, reinforcing steel bars we all have seen. So, they are bonded to the rest of the material, the rest of the concrete uh, material. So, then uh, there also when it is loaded uh, different uh, kind of phenomena can happen uh, which can lead to uh, generation of this uh, uh, stress waves or acoustic emissions. For example, uh, there also it can crack. So, you can have uh, micro and macro cracks. Then uh, the reinforcing bars can separate. And when there is some separation, there could be also mechanical rubbing between the separated parts, which can also lead to uh, generation of these acoustic emissions. Then uh, in a component like uh, a tanker uh, which carries a huge volume of liquid or gas, okay, there could be uh, some uh, fluid leakage in cases of big tanks which store or carry fluids and due to that uh, you could have this flow past the leakage or the opening and this can generate a lot of elastic stress waves. That means, this can also serve as a source for acoustic emissions. Then turbulence or the turbulent jet. due to the presence of a liquid head or some fluid pressure 
if there is uh, any turbulence in this liquid or there is any uh, turbulent jet that will also create a lot of stress uh, which can lead to uh, acoustic emissions. And in this kind of uh, component uh, material erosion is a common phenomena. So, there again it will generate lot of stress leading to uh, emissions. Okay. So, these are uh, different kind of uh, sources uh, depending on uh, what kind of component or what kind of uh, system you have. Okay. So, we have understood something about uh, these acoustic emissions now, what their sources are, how uh, they uh, generate inside a component okay. and uh, what is the difference uh, between this acoustic emission testing and uh, any other NDT technique that also we have understood. Okay. So, now uh, before we uh, conclude today, let us see the typical uh, features of uh, this kind of waves. I have talked about a bit in the beginning, but uh, let us uh, list them down. So, this is what we have learned uh, so far. Sources of uh, acoustic emission is the elastic uh, stress field or the elastic stress waves which happens when the component is loaded. So, let me reiterate this again, no load, no emission. This is the typical characteristic of acoustic emission. Then acoustic emission testing uh, does not uh, need any external source. it does not need any external supply of energy. All you do, you listen to the waves which come out from the sample. So, instead it listens to the waves coming out of the part. And this also we have talked about only active uh, features are highlighted unlike the other NDT methods uh, which uh, detects ex existing uh, defects which may or may not be active. So, in this case, uh, this uh, acoustic emission testing, it detects the movement of defects. Okay. So, that is why only active defects are highlighted in this case. The entire structure can be inspected in a single examination as I would have said before also.
and that is how this can save uh, time and cost. And uh, this is uh, primarily uh, qualitative, uh, this does not really provide you any idea about the uh, size of the defect or the location as such. So, this is primarily a qualitative method. Okay. So, these are the typical uh, characteristics of acoustic emission. So, in this class today we have learned about the basic principle of this particular technique and we also saw the sources of acoustic emission. In the next class uh, we are going to continue on this and then we will see how the test is done, what are the test parameters and the other aspects. Okay. So, for today I will stop here, I will see you next time. Thank you.